Hello everybody and welcome to the March 2023 update from Clybridge Station. We're going down to the layout in a couple of minutes, but it's hard to believe that that's already over. It just seems like yesterday, but yep, Model Rail Scotland is over for another year. I hope you enjoyed the video that I made at the show and I hope you enjoyed the videos that everybody else made at the show as well. There were lots of layouts here. And it was great to meet a few of you there as well. And I hope to meet you all again at other shows this year. I'm planning to attend the Glenrothes show and the Cooper show. We'll have a preview of the Glenrothes show as part of the April update. But uh, on behalf of everybody who attended the show, could I say to the AMRSS, Association of Model Railway Societies Scotland, Thank you very much for putting on yet another marvellous show and also thank you to all the exhibitors for attending as well. It was great. I bought a few things at the show and over the coming weeks and months, well coming up dates, months, you'll see them on the layout. And in fact I'll be towards the end of this video, I'll actually be pointing out one of them to you. Uh, and also have a look out and see if you can spot the new locomotive. If you've seen my Instagram and the Layouts Facebook page, you'll already know. If you haven't, see if you can spot it. And if you can't, you'll have to wait till the April update. Well, this month we're going to be doing work on the vegetation and uh, putting coping stones on the retaining wall in the street scene. And I'll be discussing uh, a couple of other things that I'm planning to do as well on the layout. So, if you're ready, <coughs> all aboard. Any comments, queries, or suggestions, put them in the comments box below and I look forward to reading them. And enjoy the programme. Part one of the work on the vegetation will take us from the bus garage right up to the connections tree. Some parts will require more work than others. You could see there that's just needing some vegetation put in there and then we'll get some rubbish put in there as well. This bit will need a bit more work. Now you'll see here what the wall's like. And it's got all that on it from when I put the wall in and then put down some filler. So these two bits will come out because I've got two spare bits from when I've done the wall <coughs> on the depot area, which you can see here, and on the station bit. One of these bits is not going to go to waste, however. And I'll show you what that's all about because the shopping, the, the street scene area, um, I've got two spare bits. That this and this will get replaced. And one of these is going to go over to the retail park area and be used over at the B&Q. And what I'll do there is, in a future video, I'll be putting uh, that bit of wall in opposite way around so the clean side is visible. And there'll be a, th an, a fence on the other side with the B&Q sign. And I'll also be adding in a bit of street uh, street view image in the, the background as well to make it look like it's in a retail park area. But that's going to be for a future video. <coughs> Once these two bits are in, we'll make a start on putting some stuff in the, veg in the area here to get it all done up. What also is going to happen is, I think it'll be this bit here, I'm going to actually um, replace that with some gravel and some. I'll put some scale model scenery daffodils on. I've got here my mum's memorial, and that's her ashes from when she died in 2021. Now what I don't have on here is one for my dad. At the time of my dad's death in 2011, I didn't have a layout. And his ashes are spread around the garden and at my grand's grave at Bohill Cemetery. So I'm just going to use gravel to make a small memorial to Dad. And it'll sit on this side here. So Mum at one side, Dad down here at the other side. Simple as. However, that can't be done until I've got this wall replaced. Now it's a familiar wall. You're all familiar with it. Um, I've showed you it before. So I won't go through the whole rigmarole again of... Um, showing you the construction of it. I'll just get underway with the construction of the wall, uh, the two bits, and from there on in we'll uh, be able to make a start on the vegetation work. Okay, there we go. That's uh, the replacement bit of wall in 
place. Now, don't worry about these white bits that you see here. That is actually from the um, Woodland Scenics um, rock face that I previously had down here. I'd extended it right over. My intention is to cover all of that over with vegetation on my dad's memorial. And I'm going to put dad's memorial here. And we'll be doing that in a couple of minutes. And you can see the holes there. They'll be filled in with vegetation as well. It'll be a mixture of woodland snakes, um, coarse turf, and bushes and lichen and thistles from scale model scenery that will be going in there and by the way the links to all the stuff from scale model scenery I'll put in the description below including these time for a couple of shout outs before we get on to dad's memorial and I think what I'll do is I'll start off with the shout outs for the non-railway stuff first as you know I'm a great rugby union fan but a mate of mine who plays rugby league has complained to me saying I don't I've not done a rugby league shout out yet so we'll put two in here both you'll go into on Instagram Giants RL underscore official now that's the Instagram for the Huddersfield Giants rugby league team uh, Huddersfield being the town where rugby league was formed in 1895 when 22 clubs broke away from the rugby football union and are out over paying their players nowadays both union and league are professional one of their most famous players is Errol Crabtree. Errol uh, is a one club player and played his professional career at the Huddersfield Giants and since his retirement he's been up to uh, property developing. He's also an ambassador for the Giants and he is a very keen golfer. All I can say on that regard is having seen some footage of him on his Instagram playing golf, Rory McIlroy, look out. Errol Crabtree is coming to get you. Big Errol is the name of his Instagram handle. And by the way, I'll put the links to those two in the description below, along with Leah Barrufato, a South American singer who now lives in London and performs in London uh, and busks all over the place. Uh, go and check him out. Again, Instagram link in the description below. So with those out the road, we'll get on to doing this a memorial for my dad and we'll just put it that's going to be the sort of width of it similar width to my mum's and then it'll just be going deep back with a fence there and there so we'll go and crack on with that That's going to be the area where Dad's memorial is going to be and I'll get some ballast put in there just shortly. It's two of approximately the same sort of width as my mum's one. What I've done is, you may remember in the, the previous update or one of the previous updates I took out the fencing um, at the depot area uh, and replaced it with proper scale model scenery fencing. Well this is the fencing which is actually made by Hornby and I kept it in case I did need it for something else and this is this something else so I've actually super glued it together and then what I'm going to do is I'll put the, the gravel in there and I'll give that a soaking with um, a PVA water mix and we'll let that soak in for a few days and we'll have to go upstairs and make a little sign with Bobby Clark 1929-2011 on it get it stuck onto a bit of grey board and get that glued onto the wall there so that's going to be my next task. Right, that's it in there. I probably need to put a little bit more down. This is a ballast I was on about. Now, I don't know where I actually got this from. I have no idea at all. But it certainly proved useful there for making Dad's memorial. Now, we'll need to let that dry for a few days. So we will have to return to it later on. So that will give me a chance to go and do the rest of the vegetation along here in the meantime. 
a later edition, I haven't ordered yet from Scale Model Scenery, will be some graffiti on this bit here. So that'll be a later addition to it. In fact, you can just see now the glue is starting to seep through there, so that's going to look wonderful. So we'll get a similar name sign made to what's on Mum's Memorial, and once it's all dried in, I've got some more scale model scenery daffodils to put in there. And that'll just finish that off. My dad, like my mum, eh, loved these daffodils. Just a little brief history about my dad. Eh, born in 1929. First job when he came out of um, the school in 1945 was actually with the Lochgilly Cooperative Society in the butchery department at their Bank Street department store in Lochgilly. Now that store is long gone now, it's only the supermarket bit that remains with the rest of the department store now flat. I'm going to put a link to a video in the top right hand corner that will actually show you Lochgilly in 1982 and you'll actually see the department store in all its glory of the time. You'll also see the Simpsons and Forrester's bus depot which became the Fife Scottish bus depot, actually closed in January 1982. So that actually explains why it's a Scotman co-op on the supermarket. A little tribute there to my dad. Uh, as I say, it's the Scottish Midland Cooperative Society Limited, uh, because the layout's set in Lanarkshire. <coughs> so that's a little tribute there to dad there. Um, and he was moved later to the butchery department at Glen Craig, the Lochgilly Cooperative Society's Glen Craig branch, and he later got a job working in Glen Rothes, helping to build the new houses in the first parts of Glen Rothes. Very apt that I mention that because this year marks the 75th anniversary of the new town of Glen Rothes. Now, this year's Glen Rothes Model Railway Show actually is going to be held in Kirkcaldy at the Temple Hall Community Centre in Bewley Place, and I hopefully will be there with my camcorder to film it. And I think what we'll do for that is we'll have a little tribute to Glen Rothes, looking back at his 75 years. Dad's National Service was with the Navy, and then he went on to the uh, coal mines with the National Coal Board, working here at Dundonald Pit. He then moved down to the Midlands to earn more money with my mum, and worked at Carley Hill. But he later moved back up to Scotland in 1974 to Seafield, and he took um, retirement for ill health in the late 80s, just as Seafield closed. Uh, he died in 2011, aged 81, and he actually had a brother and a sister who both died in 2001, so my dad outlived them both by 10 years. So this is going to be his little tribute here, and as I say, we'll make up a very, very small sign, we'll put that up there later on. Now, a couple of shout-outs for you. We'll go into the railway shout-outs now, and we'll start off... Um, with New Durham Junction, now that's run by Craig, so if you go and check him out, um, set in the northeast of England in the uh, 2000s, and if you are a fan of DRS, check out Barnabas Junction, Jason Griffiths runs that layout and he does regular live shows as well, and a third shout out, one that I've never done before, is a gentleman who works for Digitrains in Lincoln, his name is John JMC here on YouTube, Go and check his channel out. He actually has a layout and runs Steam. So if you love your steam engines, and I must say my mum and dad both love their steam engines, John James sees a layout for you. Right, what we'll do now is we'll go and carry on with the rest of the vegetation along here and we'll show you what's going to happen there. That's the name and um, year of life. Uh, numbers put on there. It is a different size of font to my mum's one, but you know, it doesn't matter. It's there. It'll take a few days for the stuff to dry, and then we'll get the daffodils onto it later on once it's all dried. So, for long here, what we're going to do is we're going to get a bit more vegetation put in here. It's not needing too much here, but it's needing a bit more here, so it's going to have to vary a bit. Later on, I'm going to get a couple of scale model scenery bicycles to um, put on a here, or maybe I'll, so I can put one in here, like a disused one that's dumped over. But we'll certainly get the, uh, the vegetation down onto here, fill up these gaps here, and I'll maybe add a couple more bits of rubbish as well to it, get that done up to here. Now, 
as we, as we do head along this way, you'll see that I've got the similar problems here. Let's just see them there. So again, the vegetation will be going in there. It's a pretty simple job, I know. Um, or it might look a pretty simple job. Uh, but it's obviously it's going to take a few days to get things to dry. So, which also applies to my dad's memorial. I've also got the scale model scenery light chin, which I'll start to glue down at various points as well. <coughs> uh, and the uh, scale model scenery thistles, which I'll, I'll be putting in. And in fact, I'll get the first couple of them put in just in a couple of minutes, in fact, off camera. As I get one bit done, I'll start to put the coping stones on there. That's, that's a bit I know you are all love to actually see. The <clears throat> area around the connections tree is just going to be left as it is. I'm not going to make any further alterations to the tree, but also I'll get more vegetation put in there. It might actually seem a bit strange, by the way, that I'm putting vegetation and rubbish in an area where there's no pavement but people at night could easily have crossed the road and done and put stuff in there so that's why I'm actually doing that quick model railway shout out to the train times model shop which is down in Eastbourne and which follows my model railway layout on twitter train times eb is their twitter handle uh, my twitter handle is Clydebridge STA2. So if you check those two out, that'll be great. So I'll go and get started putting the vegetation in here and we'll see where we are in a few minutes. So that's some Woodland Scenics bushes glued down. I've also added in the bramble patches from Scale Model Scenery as well as the thistles and I've put a thistle just down there as well. So I've got up to here done and I've got a thistle right in the corner there. The rest of this is just going to be kept rather than kept like that there. But I will add a couple of bits of rubbish, probably a box just in there. And then I'm going to get this top bit for a bit of the coping stones put on there. Whilst I'm here and whilst I remember, uh, a couple of layouts to go and check out on uh, YouTube. Check out March West TMD and West Blythe MPD. Uh, you'll like both of those uh, layouts, I'm pretty sh sure about that. Both set in depot areas. And also check out uh, another layout uh, that's doing quite well, and that's Dudley Central, set in the West Midlands Central area. So you can check all those out, please, and give them a a follow that would be great smashing super. I'm not going to bother about some graffiti here, but I'll probably put a bit of graffiti up here. I'm going to actually watch Everard Junction to see how he done his graffiti. So I can put a little bit. I'm not wanting to overdo it though. I mean, this is not the New York subway in the late 70s, the early 80s when the trains were ridden with graffiti. Thankfully, that's not the case anymore, by the way. The trains are graffiti free and long may they be so. Uh, the next thing that will be going on here, therefore, will be the coping stones. It's not going to be as simple as what it might have initially been because of this fence comes right up to here and these bits aren't level, but I'm going to have a crack at it, so bear with me. Right, this is it here, LX24400 coping stones, 20 strips and you get a total length of 3.9 metres, so I think I've got more than enough to do it all along the retaining wall, but as I say, we're doing a section at a time and the first section is going to be from here to here, or thereabouts, we'll see how, how far it, it gets to... The reason I don't want to add other coping stones all the way along the now is I want to do each bit one at a time so I get it absolutely spot on before moving on to the next bit because otherwise I might not be able to get vegetation in there 
And by the way, you all seen I've added a Tesco bag there, a bit of newspaper I was trying to add and it dropped and it's just in there, so it's out of sight. And I've put a cardboard box there as well. That's probably enough rubbish in that bit and we'll put a little bit more rubbish in here as we go along. So we'll get on and we'll have a look at the, the coping stones and build the first section up. Whenever I build something from scale model scenery, I always read the instructions very carefully, even when I've built it before because there could be easy changes. Treat anything you're building for your model railway layout from kit form as you would do with flat pack furniture. Make sure everything is there. If there are any problems or queries, get in touch with the supplier or whoever it was you bought it from and then take your time when building it. Well that was quite interesting reading the instructions there because it's I actually expect it to come with possibly what you see on there on the wall section but it actually doesn't it it can be used unpainted for natural stone concrete finish so I'm going to try that or if you prefer it can be painted with acrylic paints I've actually got um, some primer that I used for these and I might well use that again to give them a sort of grey finish um, they actually uh, as the as majority of the wall is straight, it should be quite easy to lay these. So I'm going to get the first bit off the now. I'll use a craft knife and cut along the, the the edges there. Get it out, get it on and have a look at it. And then I'll see if I want to spray it or not. Um, there's what the, the, the it looks like. There's a bit of staining on there. But I'm not bothered about that because I could, if that's going to get covered over with paint, it wouldn't be a problem. And we'll get that done now. It does state, by the way, we recommend that water-based paints are not thinned prior to use as this can soak the cardboard too much. Emulsion paint tester pots can also give great results too for these. And it recommends using deluxe materials, rocket car glue or similar for gluing these on. So we'll have a go at that and we'll see what we get. That's the first, oops, that's the first one up. And that's the first cock up you've got to see in this video. And I'm going to repaint it grey. Uh, one thing I will point out as well to you, it does actually look very similar in a way to the scale model scenery cable chunking. And I think that's partly because these bits are um, based upon the scale model scenery cable chunking lids. That's how they've derived the product. So I'll definitely get that sprayed grey. I'll take a few minutes then to dry it and then we'll be able to put that on once it's dry and we'll see how it all looks. place that on there. It's going to be quite awkward to try and, you know, it's got to cover everything over but if I take my time with it, it'll have to be done off camera and if I take my time with it, I'm sure I'll get it right. So I'll get the first, um, we get two of them sprayed actually and we'll get that put on and we'll have a look at it from there on in. I'll be uh, doing the retaining wall for here too, making it look like this stuff by the way, that's going to be done off camera again just for completeness and we'll be putting uh, some of that on here at the end too and any spare will also go on here too and that's going to get stuck back into position uh, using pins and wood so we'll get that sorted out. Before I go and spray that I just want to point something else out to you. Remember I had the problem with the leaking water and, that, and it's, I've got lots of bit of dust in that on here. Look what it's done to the pavement there. It's got a green tinge to it at parts. Now that might seem a bad thing to you, but I actually think it's a good thing. It makes it look quite weathered. Look, it's formed it right round, quite weathered entrance into the Royal Bank there. So I'm going to keep it like that. I'm not going to go and replace the paving. That's weathered to me. Mother Nature has done its bit for a change. Thank you, Mother Nature. Anyway, let's crack on, get this sprayed. That's how it looks after it. Now that's actually just the one coat of Halford's grey primer that I've used here and I've sprayed it outside. Uh, I should add that I was um, gave it one coat and I wore goggles, gloves and a mask when doing it even though I was outside and as I always say so should you do the same thing. You should always wear 
goggles and a mask when using aerosol paints outside or inside. I've left the shed door open for a few minutes to get some fresh air into here and we'll get this, these two bits put on. We'll have a look at that afterwards to see how it looks. There you go. So I must say it shows just how uneven my wall is. You can see how the coping stones are bending there. But it does give the, the wall a, a, a it's somehow finished look. I say somehow finished look. <coughs> And it's, I say it should be easy to go into this next section here, but that's obviously after I get the vegetation done in here. Now well, that's certainly looking um, okay. It's certainly complete anyway, I'll say that. Now, we'll give a check out, to, uh, please, to my mate Ryan Swain, who is going to be doing something for charity. He's going to be trying to get into the Guinness Book of Records for the most distance skateboarded in 24 hours. And he's going to be doing that at an airfield in Yorkshire. So um, I'll put the link to his Instagram page and you'll get full details on that. Uh, he's doing it for the charity Minds, the mental health charity. So please, please, could you give him your support for that? <coughs> And of course I'll give you the usual suspects for railway lights to check out. And that's Everard Junction and Dean Park Station. Right, whilst that is dealing around, we'll go and get on to this next bit. That's the next lot of woodland scenics, bushes, coarse turf in and some more scale model scenery rubbish as well. As I mentioned before, I've tried not to overdo the rubbish because obviously there isn't a pavement here and having chatted with a friend he actually thinks that um, probably a very limited amount of graffiti or maybe none at all would be better on here so I'll certainly proceed along those lines instead what's got to happen now is all of this new stuff that I've installed here has got to be glued down and I may just have to add a few more bits to it uh, just to give that sort of very rough effect. If you're actually uh, um, interested, uh, the Woodland Scenic stuff that I'm using here is available from quite a wide range of um, uh, model shops that you, you'll you find all over the, 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 the country. So please um, do support your local model shop there in that regard. I'm only going to do up to uh, here first of all, glue it down and then work out for the next bit here which is actually going to involve me spreading down some turf first of all up to the connections tree so that's um, what we're going to talk about there now I was on YouTube uh, having a look around at some layouts as well and layouts are a good thing to uh, on YouTube are a good thing to do to get ideas for your own um, uh, layout as well and two that have given me ideas in the past are uh, Warphampton and Shroford, both N-Gage and they actually use the street view images that you see here well, different street view images, but it was them that gave me the idea to use street view images here to make the streets go out, look as though they're going further back so Warphampton and Shroford, the latter one actually is based upon Shrewsbury very familiar location of course to all of you I'll go and get the rest of the turf down on here first, have a look at it all and then we'll get it glued down and we'll see where we are from here. There we go, so that's the glue now down uh, right up to the connections tree, so well, it's where I'll go as far as I can at the moment in this part of the, the episode and we'll just go back along there. One mistake I made in here which I'm not which uh, I've decided to avoid here is I put down the bits of newspaper and that and then glued everything down. I should really put them on afterwards, but what I've done here is I'll put the rest of the thistles and bracken in here after the glue is all dry and that'll take a few days to do. And I've tried to make it a little bit different in the amount of bushes there are as well, spread it out a bit. There are a couple of bits of rubbish that I've got from Model Rail Scotland that I'll put in here. Road cone, for instance. 
Let me get that, I'll, I'll fucking find one of those, I'll get that done. Because I'm very fortunate where I live, the main road from my suburb to the next suburb of the town um, goes past an area where there is a, a steep banking down to the, the woods and there's a lot of rubbish in there. So I was having a look as I was walking back up the road this morning and saw that uh, what was in there, there's pallets, road cones, even a child's football you could even put in here. I'm not going to overdo it, but I will be putting a couple of things in here and maybe something in here as well. But as I say, I'm not going to overdo it. As I've been told before, less is more. So less is indeed more. I'm going to get the coping stones done and get them put on. So while I'm doing that, a uh, Facebook group for you to go and check out, especially if you lived in Glenrothes at one point, or do live in Glenrothes, and it's called Go Glenrothes, and it's very apt to mention that with it being the 75th anniversary of the capital of Fife this year, the new town of Glenrothes. So go and check that out, please. Right, I'll go and get the coping stones done, get them sprayed and get them on here, and then that area will have to be left for a few days to dry. Okay, so that's four more lengths of coping stone on there. Once again, sprayed grey using the Halfords Primer. You don't have to use Halfords Primer, as I've already stated, other options are available to you if you so wish, but I've, I've chosen to use that because I've actually got it um, from when I had a black car, so that's why I've written used the Halfords Primer. In all honesty, the... the stones here, whilst they're different looking from these coping stones, it does provide a sort of visual contrast because it's two different looking walls, so who says you can't do it that way. That'll take, as I say, a few days to dry and then we'll have a good look at it. So what I'm going to do now, whilst we're waiting on that drying, is we're going to turn our attention to building a fuel tank. Well, this is the scale model scenery, Kilo X-ray 008 Oscar Oscar, and this is the oil of fuel tanks and bundwall kit in red oxide. Those of you who remember the old layout I had here, Glasgow City, all the videos of that have been deleted, by the way, uh, because this is a far more superior layout. Well, remember I had a Bachmann um, fuel tank, which sat round about here. This actually meant that these two sides were a lot shorter. This... Uh, looks to be more the ideal size of fuel tank for me and I'm planning to put it into this area here it'll cover over this join here you get it in various options you can make it in one two or three I'm going to go for the two tank kit uh, that'll fit just ideally in there I think three would be overdoing it the kit itself um, you can see it comes with the, the various base wraps. This is a triple tank base wrap, which you see here, and, and your instructions. And that's what the three tank would be like. I think that might just be a bit too large. What I will be able to do is I'll actually um, put the instructions separate than out. Quite a lot to this, you know. Now this is your base layers, there's the three, two and one, so I'm going to actually get the, the three out and what I'll do is I'll actually measure that up, so I'll get the three, I'm probably favouring going for the two tank kit, but the three looks to be quite good, but it might be just too tight a fit in there, so no harm done, you've got three uh, basic um, kits, you can make it up one, two or three, um, you could even make two tanks and put one tank separate somewhere else, I suppose, if you so wished, if you so desired. Anyway, I'll get the three bit out and then the two bit out and then I'll let you know what one I've definitely gone for. But I am favouring at the moment the two tank kit. Just waiting on my friends getting back to me on Messenger to let me know what they think. But whether I should go for two or three. But what you have to do is cut out 
the base card base layers A, B, D and E. Alpha, Bravo, Delta, Echo. Don't cut out card C. It says here. And you're actually gluing them in pairs to form the outer walls of the tanks. There's plenty actually done for you. And the instructions are very clear. It does read through them very carefully. One thing I would actually recommend you do, by the way, is um, is if you're building uh, the two tank or the one tank version, build an extra tank just so you, in case something goes wrong, uh, or at least you get practice with it. So I would certainly do that, and if you do get stuck at all, I'm pretty sure on the Railway Modelers Club that Scale Model Scenery runs, you'll be able to get lots of advice and help from people on there. So you would actually glue all your bits together. This is actually going to be the base of the tank by the looks of things. So I'm going to go and uh, crack on and get these all glued together. Parts A, B, D and E and then I'll show you where we are from there. Well, this is um, here. We've got two small sides, two big sides, bottom, top. One little tip that I'll give you. I mentioned to you about the, the panels being lettered. A little tip I'll give you is when you're gluing the panels together, have at least one panel lettered side facing out the way. So that way you know what's what, you don't get mixed up um, in building it wrong. So it's a little tip that I'll give you there. I've actually done that with all, all of them. I've not got the B on the other side, I've just got the letters on the one side, but I now know what's what. So it's a little handy tip that I'll give you there. Now what I've got to do is apply a thin bead of glue to one of the longer sides of base layer B and glue into position on top of base layer A as shown. As it says in instructions, you can't see that. And then do the same for the other side. And then put um, D in. So I'm going to do those three next. And then I'm going to show you what part C is for. It's beginning to look a little bit like a tank. There's six parts C included in the kit. And this is what they're like. And they're actually your inner braces. So... I'll apply a bead of Yoohoo glue to them. And I should add as well that if you've got children watching this, um, glue should always be used with adult supervision. Um, I, I, mean, I know Yoohoo glue is not super glue, but nevertheless it should be used with adult supervision. I'm just going to stick that in there like that. It recommends that you get as, as approximate equal distances. The only thing I would say about this kit is it doesn't actually have any markings on it to say on the parts A what are the equal distances. I've got that right there. Mm -hmm. I have. I just doubted myself there, folks. But, mm. so you just glue along there. And up there. So you're doing a sort of L shape, you're putting the glue on the edges. Doesn't matter if it overruns a little bit, by the way, the glue, because obviously this bit's going to be covered over by practically everything else. Not quite equal but it's it's pretty good. Now we've got the tricky bit of gluing the tank top on. Now this is part E. I'll sit like that. So what I'm going to do for this bit is I'm going to actually glue the whole of this bit here. I don't know how well you can pick it up on camera. I'm going to glue the whole of that edge there of that panel. And then when I work out what um, I'm going to do to get it to glue on, I'm going to glue the, uh, the th three edges as well. I'll give that a few seconds to get ready to set. You will actually have glue on your hands here doing this. I promise that to you right now. And when you're building this, another little tip that I'll give you all, 
there's build, don't get all the bits out and try and build we one wee bit and then do the next wee bit of the next tank etc build one tank at a time as I like what I'm doing here I'm building one tank at a time now the, the, the tank top is in place followed by the remaining side and you do that for each tank I'll go on something like that so I'm going to actually what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually apply the glue this time Now, as I keep saying, links to the stuff I'm using from Scale Model Scenery are in the description below. Now, that's the structure of one tank done. I'm not going to do the structure of another tank yet until I've got all the wraps on. Um, give that a few minutes to dry. There you go. But that's what it's like, so we'll give that a few minutes to dry and then we'll have a look at the uh, getting the first of the wraps on it. Now whilst I'm here and we're uh, talking about model railways, I'll give a quick shout out to Eden Road TND run by Ryan from the Cooper Model Railway Club. So if you could give him a check out please, uh, he's on YouTube. Now also another layout, I've never mentioned this one before but when Barnabas Junction was doing one of his live shows he did do a shout out, he does these regular things, um, shout out moments on his live videos, he does three per week, not videos, I mean shout outs on his weekly shows, he does three shout outs per week and one of the, the, the layouts that he gave a shout out to the other night is a layout that I have never heard of before and in fact uh, the layout is not just one layout but it's two layouts one is based upon my leg and the other is based outside and if you're going to uh, if you want to have a look at it it's Steve Gallot Saffron Model Railways so if you go and check him out he's actually come up with a great idea of not had the right look at it yet about how to make a, a an uncoupling device for a tension lock coupler. I've not had a right look at it yet, but it's something I'm going to test when it comes to um, this depot area. I'm going to see if I can get it to work on the depot area, and that'll be the subject of a future video. And it's, it says it's quite easy to make. Right, I'll leave that to dry for a few minutes, and then we'll get the wrap done. Well, I'm ready to get the tank wrap on now. I've got the thing glued. And you'll see there's a little red line, a line tank corner here, it's a wee tip that they give you. And what I'm going to do is, put it, I'm going to try and line it right there. Leave that to dry for a few minutes, and then what I'm going to do is, score the unprinted side of the tank wrap it's becoming a lot more like a fuel tank now and of course the advantage is if you're building a two or a three tank uh, uh, kit you'll have a visual reference after the first tank for the others so that you'll know what you're doing so I've got to cut out the tank top and bottom and glue them into place and then I've got to cut out the base support layers and glue in stacks of four to make six supports as shown now they are and I'll find the right bit it is F and I can't oh, hang on, they're under here as I say you'll notice that every piece is actually lettered and numbered so see the math there there's six there actually And that's uh, actually um, use two of them per tank, which is quite good. 
Now we're, we're, a wee, we're thinking a wee bit ahead of ourselves. I'll go and cut out the wrap. And we'll get them glued into position. And then we'll take from there where we're going to go. That's the two base uh, supports there. And that's our tank. Now a little tip for you. The top layer will be cleaner than the bottom layer. So we'll turn it up to the bottom layer. And I'm going to put the camera down so you can see what I'm going to do next. And we're going to get some Yuhu glue and we'll put it on there like that. Do that for a few seconds. Do be careful because Yuhu glue tends to leave threads and you have to pull them off afterwards. Now the tank, as you'll notice, is still not yet complete because we've still got to add to it the, the layers to make up the access the tank access point. That comes much later on once we've got the base, uh, the Bundy walls in place, and all the and all the concrete bases done. So that's why we're not doing that at the moment. What I'll do is off camera, I'll build the other tank. And then we'll get started on making the base for them and it will be this base here. This is the two the two layer base, uh, the two tank base. That's the two tanks made up. Should add as well, although these are um, mainly for use on a model railway layout and um, uh, a railway depot, you can use these um, at haulage yards or bus depots. I know um, former Scottish bus group um, depots would have had um, black round tanks rather than uh, these rectangular ones or cuboid ones. Uh, but they would still serve the same purpose if you were modelling a bus depot and part of your layout. You probably need one, maybe two fuel tanks, I would suggest. Known from previous depots, um, it would be one, certainly that was the case at Newborough and St Andrews, they've got one. So that, that, that so you're not restricted just using these on railway depots. Having built the tanks, the next thing we're going to do is build the base and as I've spoken to you about earlier, it'll be a two tank base that we'll be using. So before I go and get started on it, it says cut out the desired base layer depending upon the configuration of tanks you wish to use. So we've got our J Juliet base layer for two tanks. And then we'll have to cut out the corresponding wrap. And if I can find the damn thing, it's at the bottom, how do you believe it? Everything you want's at the bottom. <coughs> Twin tank base wrap, bundle wall out of wraps. I actually use the tank support wraps from the three tank sheet. Doesn't matter there. But this is all these um, step wraps and that these all be useful for the twin tank. Well, what I've got to do is cut out the base layer, apply an even coat of glue to one side of card base layer, then glue it centrally onto the unprinted side of the base wrap. So I'm going to get that cut out and get the wrap made and get it all done and then we'll look at uh, the next bit which will be cutting out the parts required to make the Bundy wall. That's the base layer done for it. I'm just going to put one of the tanks on so you can actually just see. It's, it's already starting to look a bit realistic. A little tip for you. If you're a bit unsure about doing this, use one of the layers that you're, or one of the tank size base layers that you're not going to be using and practice on that first for building this so you get the right idea as to what you've got to do when you come to actually build the proper one. A little tip part because at least that way you'll be able to learn if you're making any mistakes so you don't make it on the real one. I haven't done that of course, silly me, but never mind. 
cut out the required bundle base layers and we're going to need N for November and O for Oscar and they are kept on a separate sheet which is right underneath the instructions get out for you so as I say N for November O for Oscar and glue base layers into stacks of four ensuring all edges are square and true and then we'll cut out the accompanying inner and outer wraps and of course those inner and outer wraps are the ones that's on here bund wall inner wraps, bund wall outer wraps and then we've got the coping wraps as well so so I'll do, I'll get that done next that's the end of part one of this update I hope you can join me for part two of the March update in the meantime Take care of yourselves and enjoy your layouts. Bye-bye for now.